and welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today we're working on the Pumpkin Face Halloween Bags Perfect for Trick or Treating. I'm going to be deviating a little bit within this pattern to show you some techniques and tips and ideas in order to make this. I found this really cool and really fast to make. I did alter a little bit. I did show you some tips on how to do some of the stitch work up here. I also showed you how to in this tutorial on how to be able to stiffen up the handle if you prefer and some tips in order to get that handle right in the middle as well. And then on the other side you can do anything you want to as well. This is a great tutorial and thank you to redheart.com and let's get started right now. So here's the balls of yarn that we're going to be working with today and uh, it's a multitude of colors. Now in the pattern it shows this green. I really like the darker green. I, I thought it complemented it better in my opinion. So I actually substitute it with the darker green. Again this is your creativity. You can do what you like. Now the facial features of the pumpkin are done with the black and each one of these are reflective so in the right light as the light hits it, it will bam like a reflector. Today's pattern we're going to need two sizes of crochet hooks. We're going to use five and a half millimeter size eye for the facial features, the eyes and the mouth of the pumpkin and then the bag itself will be done with a J, a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a darning needle in order to put the face onto the pumpkin. So here is the base of the bag that we're going to be starting with and we're going to be starting along the seam line here at the bottom and then we're going to continue to go round and round. Once we get the bottom established this pattern is so easy. So today I'm going to get you started on how to read the instructions for this and then I'm going to show you how to change color and then you're off to the races and then we're going to meet back at the top. Now I did this as a tutorial sample prep. You will notice that I have a little bit of something going on differently. You know this is a creator's choice. You can do what you like and then what I want to do is that I want to finish this bag on camera with you so that I can do the handle and then we can do the facial features at the same time. So let's uh, grab our green yarn. It does call for green but again this is your creativity. You can do what you want and let's begin a slip knot. Grab your size J 6.0 millimeter crochet hook and start a slip knot right now and let's begin our first chain. So the magic number to start with today is 31. So this never counts as one, the one that is on the hook. So we're just going to go and chain 31. So one, two, three, <laughs> three, and four, and five. And let go, let's go all the way to 31. I'll meet you back up in just a second while we we'll carry on. So we're going to do a couple things on this particular round that we're going to do. Notice I said round. We're not going to go back and forth. We are going to go round. We're going to go second chain from the hook and we're going to turn it over and we're going to get the back loop. Okay, it's the back hump, back loop and we're going to crochet ourselves across this chain. So we're just going to continue to do it. Once you do the first one, the rest of them will, t uh, the chain will stay turned over so you can easily just zip down the, uh, the basically the line. So what we're going to do is once we get to the very end of this line, we're going to slap in three single crochets into the final stitch and then carry on from that point. So please meet me at the end of this line. Now once you get all the way to the end, make sure you get to the last stitch. Now later on in this tutorial, if you are off by any stitches, I'm going to show you how to cheat the system when it comes to doing your handles. So there's always a way to cheat. So the very last one, we're going to put three single crochets. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to turn a corner. So right in there. So notice how I just turned the project as I was doing that and so now I'm going to come up the other side of this chain and I want to lay the straggler down on, on top. So we're going to start immediately into the first. So this is the other side of the starting chain and we're just going to single crochet ourselves along this same line but on the opposite side. So it's not hard. So this side because we went in the back loop on the other side there will be two strings on this side which completes a full stitch. And so it's very easy. So what we want to do at the very end of this line before we join it with the slip stitch to complete the round, we want to um, put in three single crochets again on the very last um, stitch of this before doing the uh, slip stitch to create the final of this rotation. So meet me back there in just a second. So I'm about to put my three single crochets in and I've already got one and I'm going to go two and three. Okay, and so we just join it with a slip stitch at this point. So we've just gone all the way around the same chain in order to create the very base of the bag. I'm not sure why I'm struggling to get that in. So we're going to join it with a slip stitch but before you take that stitch out, I'm just going to make it bigger right now. I want you to grab a stitch marker and I just use extra um, string like this and I want to put my stitch marker into 
the base of where this loop is coming out of and that signifies to me when I have gone all the way around. So this is the hardest part of this whole project at this point in my opinion. Even the handles are really simple. So what we want to do is that we want to go around again with the same color but we do not start off with the chain one. We just immediately, we're gonna go in a continuous re uh, revelation when we do this except for when we change colors then we do a slip stitch. So we're just going to just immediately go to the next one and just go all the way around and you're gonna notice that the bag is gonna start buckling as the bottom of the bag is starting to form. You can actually already start to see it there. And that's exactly. So let's go all the way around on this revolution and we're, I'm gonna show you how to change color and then I'm just gonna set you off and then I'll meet you at the top of the bag after that. So I'm coming up to the end of the first half of the revolution and this is where the three are turning the corner and this is where we're just gonna put one into each. Okay, so we're not expanding at any point in this particular project. That's how simple this is. We are simply just going around and around. Now as it begins to buckle, what I like to do, and we can't really do it in this round, is that I like to make sure that I'm always crocheting on the outside. So I'm gonna fold it so that it, I'm like working on the outside of the bag and not in the inside if that makes any sense. You may have your own preference. You can do whatever you like. So at the end of this round what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to change color but you should be aware I'm not going to actually cut my yarn. This yarn to me is fabulous. I don't want to waste it for this tutorial and I want to uh, use it for something else in the future because I've already got a bag on the way. So let's uh, continue and I'll meet you at the end of this revolution where we'll turn colors. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm paying attention to where the stitch marker is so that I know where to stop and start. So if you're counting the rounds, um, it's a very easy way to do it but I'm also gonna show you how to cheat that too. <laughs> you know, I'm all about that. So what we're going to do is that right in where it's stitch marker, we're just going to do a slip stitch but we're not gonna slip stitch with the green. We're gonna leave the green out to the side and we're gonna immediately just grab our orange which is our changing of color and we're just gonna put it onto the hook. Notice that there's no knots. So we don't want to have knots in our work. We're just going to pull through and through. And so now we're ready with the orange. So we can just continue to do this as the pattern calls for changing colors and we immediately just start crocheting into the first one. So what we just have to do is just look for the first stitch. We lay the stragglers down on top of the line and just crochet over top of them so that they get stuck. Make sure you leave enough of long stragglers so that it gets caught underneath enough of these stitches about two inches and then it works out every time. So you just simply just crochet keeping along. What I'd recommend too, that stitch marker, you're going to want to move it up. So just grab the where the orange has started, just insert your hook, grab that stitch marker, just pull it through and it's obvious this time around that you know where that is but it's not always obvious as you go. So you can follow the pattern, change the color as often as you wish but you can just simply just get to the height of the bag and there's a number of revolutions in order to get that high and it's just really simple. So you're going to notice that the bag is going to start taking its shape as it gets deeper and deeper as, uh, as it comes around and it just becomes really uh, very a project you can sit in front of the TV and really not think about. So here's my secret. What I can do is that you can really count once this bag folds in half, you can count each row. So what I did for myself is that I said, well, I'm not going to count it. I'm just going to count the rows. I'm just going to do a whole whack of rows and then count. And it's so easy to count the, the single crochet as you're going up and down this project. So basically I just did a whole whack of orange once I got to the solid orange and then once I got to the count that I needed in the pattern, I then started at the top and I'm going to show you a little technique in just a moment on what else you can do because I kind of changed the way that my top looks. So I'm now at the top and this green line that came across was the same top as in the pattern. So I just went along and it was really, really quite easy. I did partial this in the car as well. So you'll notice that I did some drop down stitches. That's not per the pattern. I thought, you know what, it's creativity. Why not explore it a little bit more? And I thought, well, okay, let's try something different. So what I decided to do for that, and if you would like to do that, is that I jumped down two rows. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to single crochet down two rows. And so I just come down and I grab the yarn from behind like so and I pull up and then I finish the single crochet and then I single crochet into the next available um, so I skipped one and then I went into the next one just for a regular single crochet. So the next one I'm going to make sure I skip this one, go to this one and I'm just going to single crochet into that one 
pull it up and finish it off with a single crochet. I make sure I skip that same stitch on the top end and just continuing to go like this. And so you can have a really cool concept. So you really can't go wrong with this. You just gotta look and just follow along exactly where you are going. Now in my case it just happened to work out that these were even all the way around. If not, if yours doesn't in any way, you know, no reason to panic. You can always fudge it if you have to. So just again, just going down, just single crochet, pull up. And it's just a way of getting a really kind of a neat technique. And now that I'm seeing it done like this, I think I might just leave this one on too. So I'll see you in just a second where we're going to start doing the handles next. And this is really cool. So I'm back and you know what? I never intended to do this orange line over here, but I love that. I think it's really kind of cool. So what I want to do at this point is that I want to start the handle element to it. So I've been following the pattern. I'm using just as much yarn and uh, why not? You know, you only live once. So what I want to do is I want to lie it flat so that the edges are out. This will naturally fold in the shape that you see here. So let's get this yarn out of here and we don't want to get rid of that. We just want to pull it out to the side. So what to do now is that we need to start off at the bottom here, but we need to start counting some stitches. And if we count some stitches, then it totally makes sense. So I'm just gonna pull this out. And what we want to do is, and I'm showing you how to cheat the system just in case that you're off. So I'm gonna look at it and say, you know what? I think I'm one stitch a little bit too much on this side. So I'm gonna pull one out and start from there. So I'm gonna count over nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that's where I'm going to stop in order the next round in order to complete the handle. So it gives you a count on how many stitches to actually go to skip over. But what I would do if it were me because I've wrecked bags in the past is that I look on the other side and I see the farthest point over. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so I know that this is going to be equal on this side. Isn't that cool? So it's just really easy. So I'm going to put another stitch marker over here, but I'm not done yet. What I want to do is that I want to even make it simpler for myself instead of having to count is that I want to lay it down. Okay. And I want to make sure it lays flat just like this. I'm going to grab two more stitch markers and I'm just going to simply just say, okay, this one matches the one that's underneath. So this is my next stitch marker. So this will be the handle on the other side when we get around. And then just looking down straight down is that we get the next one right there. So now I've just positioned with stitch markers where my handles will be. So if you want bigger handles, you can just make sure you can just do the math and make sure it, it just equals each other. Like you can move it out if you want to. And if you want them narrower, then you can just go in a little bit more. So what we want to do is that we want to start this next revolution. So I'm going to put this back on on here and what I want to do is that right where that is is that I want to mark where that beginning is so that I know. So I'm just going to throw in another stitch marker. Stitch markers are my best friend today and I'm just going to throw in a stitch marker so that I know where I'm coming all the way around. Sometimes we get confused. So in the pattern it says that we're going to single crochet I believe nine times as we go in here. So that's why I counted the nine. So I'm just going to simply just start but I'm not going to count. I'm just going to look for the stitch marker. But if you feel like counting the secret answer is number nine. And if you're even more like to count what you're just going to do is when we get there I'll just share with you in more in a second. So we're going to get to the stitch marker which will be my number nine. So we're going to go right into where the stitch marker is and then we're going to chain 14. 14 is the gapping of the handle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And we simply just come around to this line over here. Now in the pattern, if you wanted to read that instead, it says to skip 13 stitches. Let's check that just to see if my math is right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So look at that. I eyed it out. I counted backwards on the 9 and it is perfectly the 13. But if you're off by anything, you know having a bag that has a handle that's quite, uh, that's off by just a little bit <laughs> is very noticeable. So we're going to single crochet right where we've got the stitch marker and continue to stitch mark our single crochet all the way around until we get to the next stitch marker which signifies the other side of the handle. We're going to do the exact same thing, 
But now that I have eyed out this side and I got everything perfect, I'm going to trust in myself to follow those stitch markers as I'm going all the way around. That's a stitch marker by the way. <laughs> I love this pattern. I think it was really easy. It's a lot more simpler than I expected, but I haven't done the face yet. We're going to do that live on camera and see how I do with that and then sew that on to position. So we're now here at the next stitch marker. Okay, we're going to single crochet into there and then just like the other side, we're going to chain 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, 14. And we simply just come to the next stitch marker and let's just count that because I'm, I'm kind of curious now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Look, I did that live on camera and I did not screw up. <laughs> that should get me a trophy and something. Maybe an Emmys or something. Okay, so we're going to single crochet right where we have the stitch marker and we're going to go to the next stitch marker which is the very edge that I started off with and that's where we're going to stop this revolution. The handle only consists of three revolutions. However, if you want the handle to be stronger, you can always add on more if you would like to as well. So that's up to you and how you want it to make it look at the end. And of course you can play with your colors and make it look pretty cool as well. So let's uh, stop at the final stitch marker as we signify the final round. Or actually this is the second final round. Once you get to the end, we want to move that stitch marker up because we do have to go around one more time after this as well. So let's move that stitch marker up and begin our next round. Okay, we can start off this next round. I'm just going to pull this out and just remove the stitch markers. You've got them in, in a position already. It doesn't matter where they are now. They are in permanently. And so you're just going to remove all your stitch markers. Except for the very starting stitch marker. You want to keep that in. So we're going to then just single crochet so we don't chain up one. We're just going in a continuous revolution and we single crochet except for when we get to the chain. We're still going to single crochet but let me show you what to do. So there's 14 chains within that uh, within that space that we're doing for the handle. So what we're just going to do is that every chain is going to get a single crochet. So we're going to crochet leaving two stitches on, or two strings on top and basically just chain as you normally would or single crochet into the chain as you normally would and continue to do that all the way around. So you're going to get this chain done and then you're going to still zip around and then do the other side and meet me back up at the stitch marker right here. So I'm back at the stitch marker now. I've gone all the way around and my handle is a little more thicker and now this is the final revolution where we just single crochet around everything. Now if you do not think that this gripping is thick enough, you can always go around a couple more times if you wish and make it a lot more thicker and again that creativity is up to you. So continue to single crochet and when we come back we're going to start doing the appliques that are applied to this particular pumpkin face trick or treat bag. I'm going to show you a technique now on how to hide in the loose end I finished off and I'm just going to use a darn needle because chances are your kid's probably going to hit somebody with this thing and <laughs> be swinging it around like it's nobody's business and you certainly don't want it falling apart. So here we go. So we're just going to just slip on a darning needle and then we just want to slip underneath the stitches but we want to make sure that the point of the needle is actually going in between some fibers and we go in one direction. We simply then insert the needle going back in the other direction but going in a different spot and again through the stitches so that you don't see it on either side just through the middle and we do that for a total of three times. So I go back in and again using the point of the needle just going between other plies so that you get it. It's impossible to pull this out when it's going in three different directions like this and you have a really nice finish. So what I'm going to do now is that I, this green that I applied all the way around is an extra row that's not part of the pattern. I decided to thicken it up but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to cheat a little bit more. See this gapping space? I'm going to put a green. So what I'm going to just do is that I'm just going to create a slip knot and again this is not part of the pattern. This is just my own thing uh, just for kind of strengthening up the pattern and I just want to put it up. So I just want to insert anywhere along here. You can go up underside these things and just go all the way around the interior with just a regular single crochet. So let's begin and I'm just going to join it 
chain one, single crochet and make sure this straggler is trapped on top of the line and just continuing just to uh, single crochet all the way around. This will really bulk it up and allow more strength especially at this uh, particular section right here where it's joining. It will give you more strength as well. So that's a choice that's up to you. Depends how many bags of chips your kid's gonna get versus ca hard candy that's heavier. So it's up to you really whatever you want to do for this point. So I'm going to do this both sides and then when I come back I'm going to start the applique. And when I finish both of these off I'm going to do the same technique of what the sewing was so that it will not pop out. Okay we're going to do the eye first and you need to do two of them obviously. And what we have here is a triangle and this is really unconventional from anything I've ever seen. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be starting off with a smaller crochet hook a five and a half millimeter size eye and we're going to make ourselves go in a triangle formation going all the way up but you don't decrease on every row. We want to gradually do it. Once we get to the top then what we're going to do is that we're going to spin around and uh, put some bordering in as to make it all stable and then voila you have a perfect thing. Now once it's uh, been done um, what you can do is then shape it when you're going to sew it to your particular um, bag so that you have the perfect shape for an eye. So let's uh, begin to do this next. To begin we're going to create a slip knot. Leave an extra long tail so that you can get rid of that later with the sewing it in. And then we're just going to insert our hook. So to begin what we're going to do and I know this is black and I know it's hard to see on screen but you're going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And what, the, what it says is on the back bars only so just on the top bar here Okay, we want to just single crochet ourselves second chain from the hook so it's one and two. I'm not sure you can see that but we're going for it anyway. One and two and just single crochet yourself across that chain. So because you've gone second chain from the hook you will end up with a total of uh, six single crochets going across. And when we get to the back the other side that was five so you can count it if you want to and this is number six. So let's uh, turn our work and begin the next row. Okay the next row is number two and we're going to decrease on this so we're going to chain one first and normally we would go into this first one here but we're going to go to the second one in okay and we're going to single crochet and on the last two we're going to single crochet ourselves across just in regular stitches no, so no back looping and what we want to do is then on the final two that are here we want to put two together so we insert our hook grab the yarn pull up and then go into the final stitch grab the yarn and pull up you have three on here and then just pull through all three. And that just made these two into one and that completes row number two. Let's turn our work again. So we have to be careful in these triangles that we don't decrease them too quickly. So this next row number three is really easy. We're just going to chain one and then right starting in the first one and all the way across we're just going to single crochet. So it allows it to gradually grow without forcing it to go into a sharp triangle which is perfect for what we're looking for. We want to make sure that you can identify the last two. So these last two are together. Make sure you go into that last stitch and just don't lose it especially if it's black it's kind of hard to see. And again that completes that row right there. Row number four we're just going to turn up and we're going to chain one and we're going to decrease again. So we're going to skip the first one, go to the second for a single crochet and then on the final two which is just in a few seconds right here we're going to put those two together. So two together single decrease, uh, single de uh, crochet decrease and do that. And that completes off row number four. Okay let's chain one again. We're turning our work chain one and we're going to then on this one here row number five we're just going to simply just crochet into every one again. So we're gradually just putting in every stitch so that it can gradually grow. Okay we're doing row number six. We're, we've already just chained one. I've just chained one so please chain one and then we want to skip the first one. Go to the second over single crochet and then the final two are going to be two together and that is row number six. So we're almost like it's just a matter of getting these things done. It's really quick. So this is where the game plan is going to change and we're going to move up to round seven. So turn our work and let's chain one. So the game plan is going to change. Look at the size difference so far. So the game plan changes because this is the revolution that we're going to go all the way around on it. So in the first one what we want to do is that we want to do two single crochets into the, into the very first one. Okay what we're going to do then next is that we're just going to chain or single crochet the next one and this is the next side edge and we're going to put two 
double crochets there or double two <laughs> single crochets sorry. Now we're going to move down the side. So see how I just continue to turn? So every row is going to get one single crochet into the side of it. Very easy, don't have to worry about it, don't just follow it along. Just equally space it. One thing about cro uh, uh, single crochet you can easily do that. When you get to the bottom edge just like so, that's gonna get two single crochets so that you can start turning that corner. And then we come along the bottom and then single crochet across the bottom. So one into each stitch. Obviously it's bigger so it's gonna take you a little bit longer to get over. Just gotta remember where you started. Okay and then on the final edge which is right now on the final one we're gonna put two single crochets again. Okay and now let's turn it to the final. So we're gonna come up the side again and again every row that's going up the side will get one in there. So it's really easy, um, it's a lot easier than I expected this pattern to be. So just continuing to move up and when we get to the top we've already put our two single crochets into the top so what we're just gonna do then is just slip stitch it right there and then that concludes undoing the triangle I. And so then this, if I've done it right, should match that. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to trim an extra long tail at this point because we're gonna use it to sew it to the bag and trim the tail long and then just grab the yarn, pull through the loop and just pull that all the way through and we're gonna use that as the darning um, string that will hold this to the bag. So now we have two eyes and now we still have to do a mouth. Okay, the mouth even though it looks complicated is actually just one line. So let's begin. I'm just gonna leave an extra long tail so I can deal with that later just in case and I'm gonna create a slip knot. So I'm doing this live on camera. I've not done this off camera to practice. So what we're going to do is that we're going to chain five again using the smaller hook that never counts as one and one, two, three, four and five and go all the way to row or chain number 25 and we'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so let's begin. We're gonna work on the back bars only, so just the back. And what we want to do then at this point is that we want to, shut the back. So we wanna work on the back bars only. So we're gonna skip the first one, go to the second, and we're just going to single crochet. So single crochet, second chain from the hook. And then as per the instructions, it says end into the next four stitches. So we just count four more chains. So one, single crochet, two, and three and four. And let's read our instructions again. Very easy. And now we just have to in the next 14 stitches that we are in the next 14 chains we're gonna just double crochet. So just start in the back bars only just double crochet. And this is creating the thickness of the mouth. So that's one. And please do all the way to 14. I'll see you in just a second. Okay once you get your 14 double crochets the final five stitches will be single crochet. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to leave an extra long tail with this so that we can use that to sew this to the front of the bag. So it's really a, quite an easy uh, pattern to do if you really think about it. Um, there's not a lot of brain power here. And so what we want to do on the final stitch that we get is that we want to make sure that we leave an extra long tail because we need to sew all the way around that mouth and just it's better to leave an extra long tail than it is to be too short at this point. So just trim your yarn and just pull the yarn through that loop and we're going to use that as the sewing string to go to the thing. So let's lay it out onto the um, project now and let's start shaping this in order to make it work. So I always find with myself if I don't pin it down I'm never going to get it right. So what I want to do is I want to look at the photograph that's provided on redheart.com and just kind of shape things and I'm just going to start off in the middle and just use a pin just to hold it into position and examine it. I've been notorious for attaching motifs to things and then realizing it's been out of balance. So what I want to do is that I just want to kind of eye it up, get my motifs ready, just look at them and just start po uh, positioning them into the particular project before actually getting it all worked up and then it's a mess. So here we go. 
looks like so it's really kind of cute. And so I'm just going to use some more pins and I'm just going to pin the eyes into position and then I'm going to just lift it up and just see what it looks like at this point to see if I'm going to go for it. <laughs> you know my mom always made afghans when I was a kid like quilting and she always left the pins in. <laughs> I think I've got that trait from her too. So I'm going to make sure we get the pins out so you might want to count them and then we just look at it and determine if that is going to work. What I also want to pay attention to is that the side of the mouth actually comes down. So what I want to do is that I want to kind of pin where that bend may be. And that is not a regular pin. And I just want to pin that so that mouth actually turns downward at the sides to kind of keep the look. It actually looks really cute in the photo. So that's something I do want to keep that's within the same pattern as well. And I want to make sure I'm still keeping his mouth in the middle. <laughs> So all I'm just going to do now at this point is that I'm going to put the yarn into the darning needle and I'm going to, and this is the yarn tail that is come, came from the mouth and I just simply want to feed it through and I want to use that string to pretty well bring everything together and basically I just want to glide down into it but I don't want to dive so far that it's going into the other side of the bag. <laughs> I've been known to do that too. So I'm just making sure that I kind of just coming up underneath just a few stitches and then I back out through the mouth in order to keep it stable like that. And I'm going to do that for all of the motifs here. So when I come back I'm going to have everything done and just uh, secure everything off and just take your time and make sure that you're happy with it at the end because after all it's your creativity that you are exploring today. Well here you go, here is my tutorial and this is the conclusion of it and I'm really excited about this. I think it's really great, turned out really wonderful. Even in the back side it's ready to be photographed for the reflection. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. Stay tuned for more free patterns and ideas. Until next time we'll see ya.